In order to connect towards a MongoDB cloud account, I will sign up for a new one instead. I will press the button sign up. From here, I will press the button try free. From here, I will sign up with my Google ID. I will need to accept the privacy policy in terms of service, press submit. And now we are going through the personalization process. What is your goal? Let's say we are going to explore what I can build, what type of application. Doesn't really matter what you fill in here. You can personalize this towards your own preferences. Press finish. Now you can choose your cloud database plan. I will go with a shared free plan. Press create. From here, we are going with the free shared plan and I will leave everything as is. You can also rename your cluster name if you like to, totally optional. I will just leave it at cluster zero. From here, we will need to wait a little bit, but we can also fill in our username and password. You can then say create the user. We can then go towards where would you like to connect. Let's go with my local environment. And here it is important that you add your entries to your IP access list. These IP addresses are really important and allow you to connect UChat towards your database. In order to gain access from UChat, it is important that you use this IP address. And then also in the description, you could say, for example, UChat. This IP address basically gives you access from anywhere. And just to be safe, I will share with you all the IP addresses that UChat has that you can add just to be sure that you can get access from UChat. So I just added in all the IP addresses that UChat has, including the catch all IP address basically. But if you already created a database and want to add these IP access lists, then you can also go towards network access and you can add the IP addresses from here. This will allow you to manage your IP addresses that have access towards this database and you can always add to them as well. You can pause the video to just copy over all of the IP addresses just to be safe. Once you are done, you can go towards the database section on the left hand side, then go towards the connect button. From here, we can just choose a connection method. So let's say connect your application. And from here, we basically have all the information that we need. We have the cluster URL, which we can copy. So let's head over towards UChat and go towards the server domain and just paste this URL in. For the username, you will see the username access here. So let's copy that over as well. For the password, it will be the password that you set up for this user. So I will just fill that in right now. And the database name will be listed here, will be cluster zero. So let's fill this in. There we go. Press save. And if all goes well, the data should be verified. So let's test this section out. Let's create a new data store and name this chat demo. Let's go and add a field. So let's say this field will be the first name, it will be a text field, and we can also add a label. And if you want to have a default value, you can do so. You can also leave that empty. You can do so with as many fields as you need. So let's just go with the last name and then last, let's also do an email and let's press save. We'll take a few seconds, but as you can see, a new data store has been created. If you want to take a look and see if the integration was successful, you can press the cluster zero or your database name, go towards collections. And from here, you should see a UChat underscore demo, just like we created here. UChat demo. So let's take a look inside a chatbot on how to manipulate the data. In order to add the data, we can just go with an action block. We can go with an action. We can go with integrations. 
can go with data store. We can say press edit action, can then add a record. From this record, we can select a data store. So let's select our UChat demo. And now we can select our custom fields and where we want to store them. So the first name will go towards first name, last name will go towards last name, and then the email custom field or system field will go here. We can also say save the record ID too. So if we want to store the record ID to later fetch it, we can do so as well. So we could say database user record, press save. So let's preview the step to see if the fields have been exported towards the database. And let's take a look to see whether or not the database has been updated. So let's just refresh the page. And if we take a look now, you will see that a new record has been created with this ID. And if we take a look, this ID should then be stored inside of the custom user field inside of UChat. And if we take a look at the specific data user record, you will see ending at F92 should correlate with this record ID. This will also allow you to fetch all the available data from this certain record. So the way to access or update the existing records, you can go with integrations, data store, edit the action. You can update a record. You can add or replace a record and you can also search records. So we return the records matching specific criteria. You can also find a record. So there are a lot of options to choose from, but if we say we want to update a record, we can select the data store again. We can go with the record ID. And now we can update whatever we want to. So let's say I want to update the email. Let's press save and let's preview this step again. And if we take a look inside of the database, we should now see an update of the email. And as you can see, the email now has been updated. So this is the way that you can create and manage a database inside of MongoDB. If you like this video, do consider dropping a like because it will help us reach more people and discover the power of chatbot marketing in combination with UChat. And if you want to get notified about more videos going live, do press that subscribe button and the bell notification to the right of it. For now, have a great day, take care and talk soon.